thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid and I think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide, hold me to your side, and I will love you to the end. Thy word is lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid, and I think I've lost my way, still you're there beside me. Nothing will I fear, as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light unto my path. I will not forget your love for me, and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus, be my guide, and hold me to your side, and I will love you to the end. And I will love you till the end. All right, so my teaching to you is coming from uh, the ideas that were set out uh, this month during a sermon led by uh, a pastor at the Joyful Community Church. Uh, in Los Angeles. <clears throat> and <laughs> today's topic is the heart. And properly treating the heart and the emotion, and they're there for a reason. Some men are not able to cry because maybe they were scolded by their father to not cry, and perhaps they're in post-traumatic stress disorder and they just have utter shock, and the emotion is so deep 
that they're paralyzed emotionally and possibly they can cry. Or perhaps they can cry and they make a huge storm in public and society and they'll scream in public and they're very certifiable and maybe they're taken away to a psychiatric hospital, which is not a very fun thing if you're in Los Angeles. So the heart for us men is a really pivotal thing to talk about because a lot of men in the gay community can't cry. And that happens to be something that perhaps women have not really appreciated, married women that have divorced their husbands because their husbands can't communicate, their husbands don't seem to be honest, they seem to not be what I call uh, transparent in a social psychology of translucent uh, soul. And us men, when we have engaged in sex and intimacy, it's about sharing and connecting, but also there's always a rejection. And nothing always sticks, it seems, if you understand promiscuity and strangers and booty calls and hookups and party drugs and all the things that makes our lives a living tomb of death. And we might walk around like a zombie and we're the walking dead and we have the war story and why commit suicide when you're already a dead zombie anyways just enjoy the use of your oxygen which maybe to your mind you are a leech or a parasite in the system and they've made a cottage cottage as I put in dentures I could barely even speak <laughs> ah, much better they've made a cottage industry out of problems and so maybe you get plenty of tension but there has to be just that oppression or suppression or repression or depression that just has to break through in order for you to shed tears. In order to cry, it's important cognitively, even if you're unconscious, to know that it's good. And if you have tear ducts and you can't cry, maybe you have problems with your tear ducts. But when your heart is wandering, such as the song I just sang, and you have fear, and you are unchurched, and you maybe haven't been raised on the Bible, <clears throat> you are angry. And you decide that maybe you should hide your emotion. Because a lot of men want to know you're perfect. And you have money, you have muscles, an amazing career. A one bedroom that's starting at a rough estimate of $4,000 a month in WeHo, West Hollywood. Tinseltown in Los Angeles. Or you're calling me, oh, pardon me, barely even speak. <laughs> Put in dentures. Or you are, pardon me, this is disgusting because I blew my nose with this and now I'm putting it in my mouth to get this white pubic hair from out of my mouth. Maybe you're in London or you're in Berlin or you are in Manhattan and you're discovering Tyler Lord Hamilton. So if you are perhaps unchurched and you're not familiar with the word or the Bible and certain scriptures that are very raw like in the Psalms or the Proverbs and you have wounds that you've left alone and untreated and ignored and the more your wounds are abandoned or ignored by yourself and you need to cry your scars are always going to remain it's just the way that works and moving the webcam down so you can see these gloves and you can understand that this orange shirt is matching my hat and the white in my beard is matching the white gloves. So by me describing that, I've created 
an illusion and I've created a defense mechanism and a distraction from talking about emotion. But people, we're here to talk about emotion. Because through you revealing your emotion in your heart, you can smile. And you don't have to rely on being cute in the gay community so somebody will find you adorable and they'll rescue you and sweet Beverly and you'll live happily ever after in a, a mansion in Beverly Hills and when your partner or lover or husband dies you get real estate. That kind of life doesn't mean that you're still able to treat your scars because talking about the emotion and the heart has nothing to do with real estate. It has to do with revealing your soul and what the soul is comprised of, which is emotion, experience, ego, and heart, and also being self-protective. In order to heal men, you have to reveal. To heal, you reveal. And that's why in the early Catholic Church, confession was so big, because confession means revealing. But when you are exposed, it means maybe law enforcement or justice feeds into maybe your private space and your secrets are exposed and you are degraded, dehumanized. And instead of taking the chances of that, maybe at the end of your life or you do a, a self-assessment and a reflection of your life, and judge your own self by looking in the mirror of your own consciousness when you cross over and your ego of soul goes to a very safe corner in the universe and hangs out until you reach the next plateau, the next level in your transcendence or your transitory grace that you give yourself by releasing yourself from being maybe an earthbound spirit wanting to be reincarnated. You have your own process here as well as there. And us men in the gay community need to learn to communicate and need to reveal our error and missing the mark. I try to stay away from the word sin because it triggers religious abuse to people and assumingly, admittedly, folks think I want their tithe or they are obligated to give tithing because now they feel guilty and ashamed because of sin being exposed. But that's not what we're looking for. When you talk about the heart and your fears and saying you're frightened and you're scared and you're lonely and you hate your life, it has nothing to do with tithing. So you don't have to get mad at people that are revealing a different dramatist persona or an iconic star image than maybe what you're possibly used to dealing with. We are not to stiff one another of the early formative years when a boy is brought into the world and he gets hurt and he's allowed to cry. Many fathers or dads that become gay or, you know, ditch the bitch and make the switch, at, as they say in derogatory ways, you'll hear that out there in the gay community, the connection with men is something that doesn't mean you can get away with your crime or you're missing the mark. Because when a man is in the embrace of another man's arms, there's a lot of intimacy and a lot of soul exchange. Because men are used to stiffing one another as men for money. And because of money hard-ons and what money can buy in the gay community. And so we have to learn to be able to cry because that's part of one of our flaws. We have to learn to be able to take off the mask and be able to verbalize how we feel and to reveal self, such as me taking off this mask and dealing with my anger and my hate as we are properly treating the heart with love, sympathy, empathy, compassion. It also might mean that when you have the level of transparency in a translucent social psychology, which is a term that some people haven't heard before until they come to Social Alchemy Project Access Management,
There is a doctor, he happens to be a clinical psychologist who's a Christian psychologist, which is secular humanism or recovered Catholics or recovered Protestant or evangelicals that claim to have been abused by religious figures uh, have undermined Christian psychologists because they're narrow-minded. But when you're revealing the heart and you're talking about what you're afraid of, there's nothing narrow about it. In fact, it's broadening. And you're able to get to the seat of the soul as Joseph Campbell or James Hillman or Swiss psychiatrist and psychotherapist Carl Jung would talk about the shadow and looking at what you hate about yourself and taking off all of the things that might be hiding your mouth from speaking your truth. It could be a mask or it could be lis lipstick. And taking it off the lipstick, I kind of revealed a virtue and a principle. So now we can go back to putting the Chanel makeup back on, right? I do this for shock rock. I do this to gain attention because I'm an attention whore. And there's a threat that gay men assume when I come out and talk about that because maybe they are in denial and all they want me to do is shut my mouth. But when the heart opens up by the word of God or by prayer or sensitivity or it's just your time according to the powers that be, it is broadening and widening, nothing but narrow-minded. So Dr. James Wilder, the Christian psychologist, he wrote a book and it's called Stages of a Man's Life. And he goes through six stages of what a man becomes and is in his psychological masculinity and his early formative years. The six basics of the man's life is first his unborn his fetus, where he is in his mother's womb, and he's growing a brain, he's growing hands, he's growing his heart, he's growing his penis, all the fabulous things that makes the individual a male, that when he is born, becomes conditioned and socialized by institutions, and has a status quo, or a norm, and is taught not to be deviant. Then when the unborn is born, he then becomes the infant, and that's where he learns to uh, enjoy oxygen, open his eyes to cry, have the shock of that and the trauma, which is not selfish. I was taught that when babies cry, they're selfish. So that was shaming me from crying. But I had a mother that loved me who was very emotional, and so I was conditioned to cry, so I was be able to be rescued from that type of ideology and control over my conscious and my unconscious, which is baffling because it creates denial, unrevealing, not exposing self to self. So the second stage, infant, he also is dependent on his father and he develops ages zero through three. Then the third stage of the male to future comings of masculinity, he is a child. He learns to play, he learns to talk, he learns not to go to the bathroom in his diapers, he learns if he does, he's going to be slapped. Okay, now if the boy is shamed when he cries after he gets slapped, that really hurts the man, especially if he ever becomes uh, involved among the gay community and embraces men. To unite, to ignite, means there has to be honesty. And that's why men are drawn to one another. Being gay has nothing to do with the lipstick. 
It has nothing to do with queer. It has nothing to do with LGBT rights. Being gay is about a heart of yourself that has love and passion for manity. Men. The humanity made up with the population of men. The next stage for the child is group solidarity. And in group solidarity, he learns that if he's nice to people, people will be nice back and he will gain the privilege or the rites of passage to be like the people that he's with. Group identity could also be part of the male deciding he maybe wants to go to politics for national identity. He gets an idea of perhaps what he can do and he starts his career and possibly he enters college or he gets off of drugs or he puts his promiscuity in the right perspective because he's in his 30s now and he feels like a loser. But he has to cry and he has to expose that to himself and reveal it to himself. But if he can't cry physically, the heart beats. Perhaps there's greed and he wants more to gain a sense of security and safety, which is all fleeting, temporal and transitory. Because in the present moment of the beingness, you are already at the great I am because you're made noble. You're born with spiritual gifts. You're born with a fingerprint like no other in the entire universe. So there you have group solidarity because people accept you. And that's why people may choose the gay culture to gain reciprocation and love and to balance out their life. The next stage is becoming a parent. And in many gay lives, I'm not talking about men who are married and has kids and then decided to leave their wife because they like guys. I'm talking about the gayest of the gayology, the gayological viewpoint of loving men, unless you can marry a man and adopt. But in psychological masculinity, when the man becomes a man by having children, he makes his father or elders proud of him. And so the man becomes the hero of the elderly. The man then starts educating people on how to treat the elderly. And the final stage for the male is going to segue you into elder life, where that the investment that you've made into people's lives and perhaps the legacies such as the Social Alchemy Project, access management in your situation and mine leaves that legacy. And it changes generation to generation because you care about your youth and you care about your generation. So these are really important principles when we're talking about humane life sustainability and coming out of your closet. Coming out of the closet doesn't mean saying you like guys. Coming out of the closet could be you coming out of the closet that hides the fear and the vulnerability that you feel. You don't have to tell anybody what you feel like. It's kind of like the man's mantra in a way that we have to understand is a myth. A lot of men, when you call them out on things, they say, why the hell do I need to tell you? Fuck off. And there's aggression. There's the alpha male. And there's the bad boys club because perhaps he doesn't want to be exposed, nor does he want to reveal himself and expose himself to himself. However, your heart matters and your emotions matter. But the less you reveal, the larger the demon becomes, so to speak. When you ignore something that keeps popping into your conscious from your subconscious or unconscious mind, and you fight it down and you say it doesn't belong to you, such as dreams, feelings, emotion, because of your own conservatism, you then only find that the voice becomes louder. And that's why people have psychiatric breaks at times, emotional meltdowns, because they have to come out of their closets. And as men, that's okay to do. So now, if you would kindly open up your Bibles to Ephesians 5, verse 8 through 14. 
Ephesians 5, chapter uh, 5, that is, verses 8 through 14. Pardon me for stumbling on my thoughts. That could put dentures in my brain when I stumble on words. Comparably, I put in dentures. If I could put dentures in my mind, that would probably help me with my thinking. I'm very nervous about this topic, and I reveal that to you, because a lot of men in the gay community flag me on my YouTube videos, and they don't want me as a gay man to come out with my voice, because they haven't come out with their voice. And I would just encourage you to understand that we all have our shadow, according to Swiss psychiatrist and psychotherapist Carl Jung. And so if we can acknowledge that and reveal that to ourselves in our minds, we're revealing it to God. Because to know thyself is to know God. I think Aristotle or Galileo or said that. It wasn't Plato. But let's read. Now, when I read this, Apostle Paul created a church. He was a church planter. He planted churches. He was a missionary because the great commission that Christ left before he ascended into heaven was going to all corners of the earth, preaching and making disciples of men and being fishers of men, fish for men, because your God, Father God, loves though men. Uh, tinctures. <laughs> Pardon me. So, Apostle Paul was under house arrest by the Roman government empire. And he was allowed to write letters to the church of Ephesus. Okay? And so, when he was writing, he spoke to Timothy because he was able to have outside contact, which is pretty fabulous, isn't it? And this is what he wrote to the Church of Ephesus, because the Church of Ephesus was engaging in a Christian moral belief, but because they come from pagans, a lot of them, they were still engaging in their orgies, their gluttony of desire, and all of the drunkenness, which are things that we find in the gay community, even if it's an open relationship that you're in, and you're partner says you both can go out with other guys but you have to bring them home for sex with me or your partner so to speak this is kind of like the social norm right now and this is one of the reasons why christians and people in uh political conservatism like the republicans dislike gay rights it's because we're wild at heart and we have a wandering heart Inasmuch as thy word is a lamp into our feet to bring us clarity on our path. So this is what Apostle Paul wrote. For you were once in darkness, but now you are the light in the Lord, Jesus Christ, a perfect man. Live as children of light, for the fruit of of the light consists in all goodness. Pure in heart is where we should be, is what Paul is explaining. And the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And I like to put a capital T for truth because it's a big time where telling truth is so of keen importance. And we've been doing this starting, I think, from promise keepers, as far as a Christian uh, sect, okay? And so telling your truth, if you're bi-curious or homosexual, doesn't mean you're not going to bring healing to your life. It's important to reveal yourself to God, because in the light of the Lord, you can transcend that darkness. You can also own your darkness and take social and personal responsibility. So in this light, as children, pure in heart, for you'll see God, you find out what pleases the Lord. 
have nothing to do with fruitless deeds of darkness. That basically means cancel out the Jack Off for Freedom social justice policy, Tyler Lord Hamilton. Whatever I've shown you in my shock rock videos, my bizarre aristocracy, because I come from Sir Isaac Newton lineage as well as Armenian Empire and aristocracy. And in the shock rock and the eccentrism, very Jonathan Waters, mind you. So I don't need to be uh, demeaned or undermined, even for yourself. And in that avant-gardeness, I show the fruitlessness in darkness, but I make dark humor out of it. Physical comedy, absurdist comedy, to make important points when I get to my lecturing and my teaching and my efficacious talks and my genuine elevated dialogue and public discourse with you. So instead of being consumed by the fruitless deeds of darkness and the shame and the hiding from that because the church of Ephesus was in denial about it. And the more they were in denial about it with themselves, they were self-deceiving themselves and thus lying to other people. That's why it's important to reveal to yourself who you are and confess for yourself and for your sake. God doesn't need our confession. It's for your own social transformative growth. It's for your own alchemy, your metamorphosis, and your catharsis. So when you are not lost in the fruitless deeds of your darkness, you find what the Lord is pleased by, and you have exposed all the intricacies of darkness. That could mean uh, eroticizing men in prison or men in uniform through Pornhub or any of the pornographic arts or engaging in sexual violence because pornography conditioned and modeled you to do that and you are desynthesized but you feel lost and you feel scared and the more that you hide this the easier it is to stay down below the wounds because the healing of the wound has already occurred the word of God says that by the crucifixion of Christ your stripes with him have healed you your own burden heals you when you bring it to the cross because through Christ's stripes you are healed and there's no isolation, separatist, or segregation because all is one. So it is shameful, as the scripture continues, even to mention what the disobedience you do in secret if you don't have conviction and you don't have genuine remorse through the confession. It's shame onto you. And it only makes you want to hide in maybe your corners of prejudice, shadows of prejudice, or the shadows of inner homophobia, men not liking other gay men in the gay community because of self-hatred. And turning over to the self-grandizement to think you're wonderful and you're only arrogant and you're a prick, and you're a bastard. This is kind of what the plethora of experiences you will find if you really study psychological masculinity and men's psychology, and as I am deeming it as masculinist theory. We have a feminist theory. You're called to a masculinist theory, and you do that through Christ Jesus. It's pretty pretty blessed. So in the shamefulness to mention what you're disobedient for in secret is a problem in properly treating the heart and keeping it tender for real love with another man. But in everything exposed by the light because when it sees the light, it loses its darkness because confession is good for the soul. And if you don't reveal it, the light is going to expose it and it becomes visible. And everything that is illuminated becomes a light. So you are the light. This is why it is said, wake up sleeper. And I suggest become aware awake. Rise from the dead 
of your oppression and suppression is what I'm going to add to that. And Christ will shine on you. That's the context that we're coming from in order for you to effectively treat your heart and to walk into the space that you already have because you already have the wound. So this being stated, it's okay to challenge yourself with parallel inquiry that we're making at Social Alchemy Project Access Management and to expose it to yourself and reveal it to yourself by the ethical welcoming collective consciousness of men that you can trust as well when you're ready to tell another man. If you stay hidden to darkness, the light will inevitably ex be exposed. I had to put in dentures, I could barely even speak. <laughs> ah, will eventually expose you because the Word of God says that all things will be revealed and there's nothing new underneath the sun. So you don't have to be in your secrecy. You can learn to communicate as men. When women dump men, it's not only the man dumping the woman, ditch the bitch and make the switch, but it's also the woman dumping the man can because he's a closed can and he can't communicate because he's not open to opening the can or Pandora's box because it's very dark and it's ugly. But once you throw up what you need to throw up, you find that you're not needing to result to sinister behaviorism and conniving others because being dumped by women and being in a gay men culture, I have the commitment to you for you not to be stuck, for you to learn that communication by the motivational accountability life coaching that I want to bring you, if you would only allow it. Before you can repent and turn from your ways, right, and be woken up, to have the strength to leave what is immature. You're acting like a little boy, you need to be a man. For that to happen, there's the confession of it. So to change, you have to reveal it to yourself and to God. God knows everything. So why do I need to tell God? It's for your sake and it's for your good and working out your salvation, according to the Bible, through fear and trembling. When revealing heart to God, you are connecting upward. When you are revealing to others, you're connecting outward. And that's what the gay man is there to help you formulate in trust-building community. In fact, it's advanced intentional community developmentalism according to Social Alchemy Project Access Management, myself. And when you reveal the heart to God and you're upward, and you reveal outward to people, you reveal to yourself and you're connecting inward. So you have upward, outward, and inward. So your life becomes more prosperous. Your life becomes larger than the life you thought you could live. You don't have to necessarily pursue attention as a celebrity because your life becomes better than a playwright. Revealing not is the shame and it creates the self-sabotage and the mistakes that you have to learn to deal with as a man so that as you heal you can help other men who can't help themselves and you become a teacher of morality. When you look at Christ, crucifixions on the cross were always very private. You know, and today, if we put somebody through the gas chamber to put it on CNN, all the details from point A to point Z, it's very exploitive and exhibitionism is very cheapening. And we know that in the gay community as ourselves. So in as much as we're human and we're hot guys and we crave attention, you can see 
that when you're exposed, you become a spectacle like Jesus Christ was when he was on the cross. He was probably, if not, one of the only publicized, visible crucifixion on exhibit. It was like in Indiana in the day in early America, lynching black people in the middle of a town square and people mocking at you and laughing at you. So the reason why Christ needed to be revealed and exposed like that, it was because his blood had to be applied. Because through his blood, we see that he conquered death in the tomb days later. And so when you expose and reveal yourself to yourself, you're allowing healthy blood to beat properly through your heart. This archetype, this figurative speaking, this metaphor is for you to reveal your pain, reveal your scars so you can heal. You reveal your heart to yourself and to people, perhaps a gay man, a spiritual brother that you trust. And when you do that, you find out that you're not alone in being so frightened. <clears throat> Politics and borderline personality disorder tactics that some of your public administrators use in their scandal, in their secrecy and not coming out of the closet regarding their sexual assault or sexual mistreatment toward women is just like not coming out of the closet regarding your IRS. Being in a closet is a thing that's applied through one's entire life. A psychologist will say to you that if one lies in a certain area of their life, they'll lie in other areas of their life. And what happens is they may not know they're lying. And so when you create a regulatory appointment for yourself, you go beyond the hysteria machine, the screams, the agony, the despair, the torture that we put ourselves through as men. There's a book called The Force of Character. But I wanted to say that in the force of good character, there's proper fitness for you to do what you need to do as a community organizer or a civilian group lobbyist or a public administrator. And you can help other people in a civil society to understand in the civic center of conviction and confession that one can get beyond subscribing to turmoil all the time. Men are hurting and they will break other men's spirits and they'll stab one another in the back. And they will create false dreams and delusions of self-grandizement for themselves because they're frightened and they want people to see that they're perfect in an approval system. When you go beyond that, you become educated. You become your own pseudo of a doctor of philosophy and you learn that in our society, men are not training men to become philosophers and to use critical thought and critical thinking. That's why you reveal to yourself who you are, and then maybe you can get past the uncomfortable feelings with other people because you're afraid you're going to be rejected. In the duality of accepting and not accepting, in the duality of the light and the darkness, in the duality of being closeted and not closeted, there stands love and strength and courage. Joyce DeWitt, Janet Woodford Three's company, told me God, a couple of years ago, I think, through a letter, that I put a smile on her face because I have conquered obstacles with courage and grace. Now, I'm not where one is to be to proclaim they're perfect, but I wanted to say that with your strength, and your courage and the care of the seat and soul to love the good and bad because of lessons you learn. You become your own alchemist, self-governed, 
self-alchemist. And the broken promises become healed, and you realize you have promised to yourself and people to come from a place of authenticity and not be surfacy or superficial, which is still the norm in LA. I know a pastor who lies about his age because it's the approval system. But when we can see that we get better with age like an antique and we gain more value, we understand the kingdom of God. Jesus in his ministry was big on talking about the kingdom of God, very little the church. And so we can talk, and we can have conversations, symposiums, conferences, and we can go ahead and see things that is about love. I can't believe this. The phone is ringing. Um, I'm afraid to answer that. So we don't have to be walled off, but we can be well adjusted to ourselves and it exchange the vibrant truths, the interesting, controversial things that people might say, but it's really about saving lives through your integrity. And this is grace for yourself. Courage to think and courage to challenge ignorance. Just because you're out of one closet doesn't mean you have maybe a couple what closets do you have? What's preventing you from tearing up? What's stopping you from being sensitive as a beautiful man and being honest in your living, which is true psychological masculinity? What's catching you with a rusted hook that people have fished for to get your appraisal of them? your approval of them. What linguistic sensibility can you have? You could borrow some of the terminology or the new social science rhetoric that's always being created. And you can see that you can let your life take shape the way it's supposed to be, which is absolute mystery. What is reprehensible? What is inexcusable? What do you deny? What are your identity politics? What is your political homosexuality? What is your fear in the disarray and the disorder of your social and behavioral sciences that might be dark? But if we use comical humor of humility, we find that there's an aura about you and you don't have to result to fan clips and what people say to validate you. But you can understand that for what you have as a nation, as a man, American, or another place of the world, through your own self-talk, using the right words to create new pathways in your brain that is unfoolish, it's wise, and it's about considering that nothingness, or when you're in the beingness of a nothingness and you have all things handed to you, there's no reason not to be transparent in a translucent social psychology. So studies, scientists have gone into the atom of the atom of the atom or in outer space or the cell of the cell within the cell and they have found void. That's what we have underneath all of this. So in everything that we use to doll ourselves up, Chanel makeup, beards, what have you, hats to hide us from the cranial transference of light into our brain. There's nothing to hide because you are a precious gem. You have brilliant process just as you are right now. Let that happen because it can continue to establish the work so nicely for your visionary futurist work in social justice prevalence and democracy promotion without force. 
and it keeps you very forward thinking. This is being your own spiritual teacher and being your own alchemist. This is seeing the love of yourself in Jesus of light, revealing and exposing to yourself what you are well known for in your career or your lies or your cheating the IRS. It is to your benefit to enter that place that's already in you. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. You're already awakened. But we want to make you aware awake with the allegiances you have and the blessedness you have in Los Angeles, perhaps. You are the talent that's appreciated by those when you converge, when you convert to utter truth. You are the coverage that you need in your own self-determined life and changing the ideological weapons of hating yourself and not being perfect enough and maybe considering suicide to finalize your life because you only have lost outcomes because of maybe of poor choices and the lack of self-efficacy knowing the degree and power you have in your capability to have the capacity to have that change occur for you. Tears are no tears. Your scientific literature is telling you to know thyself is to know God. That is your moral guidance. And that is the outrage that we have been conditioned to be against. There is not a Swamiji, but a spiritual teacher. Her name is Gangaji. She talks about the heart broken open. When your heart is broken, it becomes open. It is a love secret now spoken. It is the truth alive in you as you face the death to your ignorance and become knowledgeable. Not with earthly knowledge or earthly wisdom, but a mysterious knowledge and a mysterious wisdom that comes from your own self-actualization and self-realization that you can be honest in your living. You can face that death and now be the flame of your truth with a capital T. You could have freedom in the prison of your mind and you can be released by your own self-acknowledgement. You could be free of the mind's tyranny that disables you. You could live in the rivers of freedom and get on to your sweet destiny and fate. In the deepest waters, who are you? And are you drowning or are you swimming? Or were you drowning, but a part of you like your foot is up and you're floating, but your head is underneath or your head is up your ass? What is the freedom for you right now? And what is the resolve? You are all that because you have the embrace of yourself. You are already going to be your best friend, your best expert on yourself to market yourself, but you do that through your gumbo jumbo honesty and standing tall in yourself and not being afraid of who you see when you see yourself. To take off the robe of hiding yourself and to stand there. Muscular or not muscular. Tennis shorts with no tennis legs or not. You can accept every part of yourself inward and outward. You could take off the gloves that have fortified you and fabricated some type of story so you don't acknowledge the evil that you've put your hands into by lying to your government. The more honest you are with the federal government, 
the more honest they are in being there with you. There's nothing wrong with government. There's nothing wrong with your self-governance. Limited government on yourself or big government on yourself. There's governing. There's principle and virtue in your self-governance and even in the hierarchy of the political system in DC. You don't have to drain a swamp. You have to drain your truth out as a river of life to heal other people. And that is humane life sustainability. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Please sing with me if you know these words. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid and think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me to the end. Because you don't have to be afraid of yourself. Your monster that's coming out, the beauty and the beast. That is pertaining to love when you take off your mask. Because the light of word, the lightness of Christ becomes your lamp. So thy word is a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. Mm. Pick my nose. Thy word is a lamp unto your feet, your lamp your word, having social graces over yourself, forgive yourself, love mercy for yourself, and a light unto your path. You will not forget your love for you and yet your heart forever may be wandering. Jesus be your guide and hold you to your side and you will love yourself to the end. Back to the original lyrics according to Amy Grant, Thy Word. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. When I feel afraid and think I've lost my way, still you're there right beside me. Nothing will I fear as long as you are near. Please be near me till the end. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet 
and a light unto my path. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will not forget your love for me and yet my heart forever is wandering. Jesus be my guide, hold me to your side, and I will love you till the end. And I will love you till the end. Love you. Make yourself smile and do it by accepting yourself. And properly treating your heart. You know you can do it. I know you're doing it right now. Congratulations. Thank you for the safer global community of men knowing men. We call it gay.